Hi, this is Judith Karakshani, Imre Ungi and Manos Brilakis, presenting case 129 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of uh, a patient with three vessel coronary disease, including a right coronary artery CTO. The patient was a young man who presented with stable angina, even with low levels of exertion. He had normal ejection fraction and a positive stress test. This is his coronary angiogram. He has a CTO of the right coronary artery, but he also has significant disease on the left system with lesions in the proximal LAD, as well as the ramus, as well as the circumflex. So severe three vessel disease, and the question is, what would be the optimal revascularization strategy? This patient has three vessel disease and a high syntax score. And he is also a good surgical candidate, being that he is young without significant comorbidities. So in patients like this, coronary bypass is actually the preferred revascularization strategy. However, the patient declined coronary bypass and was instead referred for percutaneous coronary intervention. So in cases like this, which one should be the initial vessel to attempt? The CTO, which would make PCI of the left safer, or PCI of the left that might make the CTO safer? And this is hard to have a correct answer, but our thought was to start with the right coronary artery, which would then make PCI of the left uh, less uh, risky. Here is a lateral view of the right coronary artery. We have uh, essentially a CTO with um, a well-defined proximal cap. There are uh, uh, small branches an acute marginal branch, but there is a well-defined proximal cap. We have an amplatch one guide catheter. And in this case, uh, we do have a well-defined proximal cap, length of 30 millimeters. The distal vessel appeared to be in good quality. And there were septal and epicardial collaterals, but we decided to first do an undergrade crossing attempt. And uh, we tried with a Corsair and a Fielder XTA, which seemed to advance along the course of the vessel, but would not advance any further than this area. And we did a dual injection, and again, we're still, it still looks like within the body of the CTO. What should not be done in this case is a STAR, which is um, subintimal tracking and reentry. We still have um, some way to go, and the ideal thing would be to either cross with a wire, if not, and re-entry is needed, the goal would be to do a targeted re-entry with the Stingray system or use the parallel wiring technique instead of uh, essentially increasing the dissection plane using uh, the STAR technique. We tried to deliver a Stingray that did not work. We used uh, a guide extension, a trap liner, and we did predilatation with a 1.5 millimeter balloon. Guide extensions are used in the vast majority of cases that become ADR because they not only provide support, but they also decrease the likelihood of forming a significant hematoma within the subintimal space. So eventually, we were able to advance the stingray all the way to the distal vessel, and we did re-entry attempts using the double blind stick and swap technique. However, those were unsuccessful. And the question is, what would be the best uh, next step? The bobsled technique, uh, the straw technique, a stiffer wire, or the Carlino technique? And this is what the stick and swap is about. We have uh, the stingray balloon distal to the distal trulumen. We perform a puncture using a stiff wire, stingray or sometimes Hornet 14 or Confianza Pro 12. Then remove that stiff wire and then insert a polymer jacketed wire, the Pilot 200 is the most commonly used one, that is able to more easily track through that uh, entry point into the distal trulumen and further down the vessel. This is what STRO is, which is uh, trying to decrease the size of subintimal hematoma by aspirating either through the lumen of the stingray balloon itself or with the separate over the wire balloon more proximally and by aspirating, decreasing the hematoma, the distal true lumen is decompressed and is a better target for re-entry. Uh, in this case, what uh, should not be done is once again enlarge the dissection plane. The goal is to minimize the size of the dissection plane. 
So we did the bobsled, which means advancing the stingray in a slightly different spot, in this case a little more distally, but once again multiple attempts, we just could not get back in. Um, we did have a fairly large hematoma and despite aspiration we could not treat it. So what to do next? Our plan was uh, to um, switch retrograde, but we knew that the patient had significant disease in the left system and we did not want to advance equipment through that vessel before standing it. We first did assessment of the left main using intravascular ultrasound. The area was 6.4, so borderline, so we decided to not stand the left main initially. So we predilated the LAD and then standed it with a drug eluting stand. And after doing that, then we went retrograde through the LAD and the septal collaterals. This is a fairly large septal collateral going here. There are different septal surfing wires. I must say in our practice, increasingly we're increasingly using the SUO3, which is a very soft 0.3 gram wire and tracks very well through tortuosity and works well for both septal as well as epicardial collaterals. We did surfing, it didn't work. We did a contrast injection through the microcatheter. Uh, we see a network of uh, connections. And we, we use the SUO3 one more time. And this time, after multiple manipulations coming back and forth, um, the wire did actually find its way tracking a cor across the course of the right coronary artery. Unfortunately, we could not get the microcatheter, the courser, to track. So what would be the worst next step? Guide extension, different microcatheter, 1.5 balloon or change wire. And here, obviously, we don't want to change our guide wire because the wire is in this ultralumen that was hard to get. But all the other are good options. Using a guide extension on the undergrade guide, using a different microcatheter or using a small balloon are all options when the microcatheter does not follow the wire through a septal collateral. So in this case, uh, we did try a caravel. And actually, to our pleasant surprise, the caravel did track uh, fairly nicely all the way down to the distal right coronary artery. It was advanced with knuckling all the way back uh, to the ostium of the right coronary artery. And then eventually the wire went out into the aorta. In these cases, what would be the worst step? To snare, to withdraw and rewire, to change the wire or to change the microcatheter. And here, obviously, you don't want to change the microcatheter because you have in a very strong position, but everything else is an option. The wire can be changed or we can withdraw and rewire. And what we actually did here is just uh, withdrew a few times and rewired. And eventually the wire found its way into the undergrade chi catheter. The wire was trapped the retrograde uh, caravel was advanced into the guide catheter, and then we externalized with the RG3. We predilated and stented the right coronary artery with a long drug eluting stent, and that provided a nice result uh, in the right coronary artery. We had the guide disengaged from the left main. We did not have any ischemia issues during this process, and we do have recanalization of the right coronary artery. We debated whether to complete uh, the revascularization at this case or um, stage it. However, uh, the decision was made to proceed because we did, had not used too much contrast or radiation until this time. So we stented, uh, this is a trifurcation, this is the left main trifurcation. We predilated, we had stented the LAD, we now predilated the ramus. And trifurcations are hard to treat because there is no really established technique. In this case, we had a stand in the LAD. We decided to place a stand into the ramus and do provision onto the circumflex. Retrospectively, that was not a good idea because here we already had sluggish flow into the circumflex after predilatation. So in retrospect, we shouldn't have done that. And sure enough, after we did it, the patient developed a chest pain, hypotension, and ST segment elevation. The reason was losing the circumflex. And what is the answer? Essentially, we had acute vessel closure, but fortunately, we did have a jailed wire into the circumflex, highlighting the importance of having a jailed wire into this vessel. So what we did is we were able to predilate with a small balloon and then uh, um, place an additional stand into the circumflex, did the proximal optimization technique. 
and then did sequential kissing. We kissed into the LED and the ramus, and then uh, put balloons in the ramus and the circumflex and did kissing there as well, and then finished with the final proximal optimization technique with a short 35 millimeter uh, balloon. And that provided a nice final result with good flow in all three vessels, LAD, Ramus, as well as Circumflex. We still have some collaterals to the right, but sometimes it takes uh, time for those collaterals to regress after restoring uh, flow into the LAD. Uh, final proximal optimization technique, and this is once again the final result. This was a dense case with multiple things happening during the case, but illustrates first that uh, there is uh, a need for being persistent and changing strategies in CTO. In this case, undergrade did not work, but retrograde was successful. In uh, ADR, hematoma is the enemy, and that was the reason that ADR did not work in this case. The way to prevent it is by minimizing uh, balloon inflations in the subintimal space and using a guide extension. Also, one can aspirate if hematoma forms. In case of retrograde through a vessel that has disease, it is important to treat the donor vessel first before advancing wires and microcatheters through this, and that's what we did here with the LAD. When provisional standing is done, as in our case, it's critical to keep the wire in place. If we did not have a wire into the circumflex once we lost the vessel, uh, we would have been in big trouble, but fortunately we did have a guide wire and that helped us balloon and get a stand, restore flow and restore the patient uh, hemodynamics and resolve the chest pain and ST segment elevation. And like every complications, what we had here is acute vessel closure. Identifying it rapidly is critical and taking care of it is critical before it um, creates a spiral of decline with shock and decreased coronary perfusion. Thank you.